that I'm working on the great old again. I blew a hose right there. That is for the telescoping cylinder to go in and out. And a lot of guys give me grief on this thing for worrying about blowing a hose or something like that. Every single one of these cylinders on this machine has a hydraulic lock. So it takes pressure to release the opposite side. So if you don't have pressure on it, it's not going to release it. So even though I blew this line, it didn't make a difference in, in safety. It, it wouldn't move either way. That was it. It just didn't have enough pressure. But I'm going to go get another one made. Take this apart here real quick. <clears throat> this one's been replaced before. And I've had this machine for a few years now. And little by little, I just keep replacing hoses. I think this is the one I did last. Yeah, that's the one I did last. But, like I said, little by little, I just keep replacing hoses. You know, um, this one will probably be next. And then these two are starting to get a little bit of dry crack. But we got a shop local. They can uh, build about any hose we need, and they're, they're reasonable. But I'll get this tomorrow and get it back to work. Um, I was using it like a tow truck. I finished all that and uh, I was moving some stuff around. I took a box off the truck the other day, or right after that. I took this box off a truck for a guy. He wanted one of our, our boxes because this box is in bad shape. Doesn't look like it till you get back here. There's nothing left here. The tailboard's completely broken off, rusted off, whatever. But the great all blew a hose right here. We were done. I was moving other trucks around. So, anyways, let's get this hose off so I can get it replaced now. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of boogered up, but that's where that line just kept working back and forth and back and forth until it finally let loose. I mean, it, I can see all the way through there into the other side of the hose. That's how bad it blew. Anyways, we'll get another one. A lot of people give me grief about these tires on this cradle and how bad they are and I agree they are in bad shape you could use two tires however I'll show you why I haven't put tires on this is the last quote two tires $550 a piece for the tires $40 to mount them if I bring them to them, the rims to them with no tires on them, $1,100.40 per tire for foam filled, and each valve stems $10. That's $3,400.80 for two tires. That is why I haven't replaced these tires yet. I'm not a rich man. When it's absolutely necessary, I will. And what I'll do is I'll take the two good ones off the front. These ones are in pretty good shape. I'll take these off, I'll stick them on the back and put two new ones on the front. But until, I'm not going to replace them until it's necessary. That's a huge amount of money for me. Especially when I'm looking at one of my drive motors is leaking. The seal on the drive motor out here, it's leaking. I'm going to have to get this seal, this steering uh, cylinder sealed up. You know, it's constant maintenance. We're always doing something to the old girl. But it's worth it. You know, we, we use it a lot. So, anyways, let's get, uh, man, look. I replaced these when I first got it. And it's starting to crack already, too. I'll be doing them again soon. Anyways, let's go get us a third old one. So here's a problem I skids here lately. <clears throat> it's been marking its territory. Everywhere you park it, it leaves a puddle. It smells like diesel fuel. So I'm going to back it out of here. Um, see what we can find out. 
I took one of these truck boxes off and I keep my skid steer in here with all my attachments so that uh, they're out of the weather. My, my bucket, my postal auger, the grapple bucket, and the two augers. Those are the two side covers for it. Um, they're kind of bent up. They don't stay in place. I need to order new ones. I just haven't. I had to replace the tire the other day. Um, sidewall got a hole in it. So I got a brand new tire on the rear right there. But let's get her out of here and see what we can find for this leak. <clears throat> Wait to start. It's got this dog that slides out and this rests against it to keep the uh, boom from coming down and hitting you. So <clears throat> everything on the diesel fuel is on the other side of the engine. Actually, this may not be too hard. The whole, oh, there it is, right there. It's diesel fuel. I'm thinking this line rubbed or this line rubbed off right here for my uh, supply line. So I think I'm just gonna take that loose real quick, pull it out of there and see what I can find. See if it's got some holes in it. Um, looks like just regular rubber fuel line for di for diesel fuel, you know, and it comes right up to my filter housing. So uh, let's grab some tools. So we can find. All right, so this is where the dipstick was rubbing, and it's not through, but where it came through that bracket is. So when we replace this, we'll put some uh, a protective sleeve over top of a, a larger piece of hose in the places where it was rubbing so this doesn't happen again so i'm gonna head into the parts store and hopefully get us some fuel line all right so i got this tight but look at this it'll still move these are not junk clamps they're decent clamps but that could be I'll have to keep an eye on it because if this can move like this, there's a good point, good chance that it'll let it suck air and then drain everything back to the tank and lose, uh, might be, a, might lose my, my fuel prime. Let's stick down in there. But I got it back in there. Let's see if the old girl fires up. this I put uh, brand new tires on it um, there I did brand new tires and wheels because uh, the deal I got was pretty good with both and then the other day you know, all four were brand new the other day we got a puncture in the sidewall and one so I had to get another one I think there's like 20 hours on these um, and here's a here's the one that got a puncture in it See, where is it? It's marked here somewhere. But I didn't want to. There it is. Went right through here. And they didn't want to plug it. They said it's it's a skid steer tire. I said, well, I understand that. What's the big deal? Why can't you just plug a skid steer tire? And you can see how, how much treads on these things. There's the three bars there. 
they don't have a lot of use on them but I'm gonna see if I can find something to plug that thing put a, a plug a, a patch that's what I mean a patch on the inside that pulls through with that stem or whatever I don't want to scrap that tire way too good a shape to get rid of it so this is where I keep the skid steer this is one of those uh, truck boxes that I took off this is what led me to find the, the diesel fuel leak I kept seeing these puddles and it start it started out just a little drip and I didn't see where it was coming from and that's what led me to doing this he's not dripping at all I'm gonna go ahead and Except for that one Ford 1520 mower it's a three-cylinder diesel I can't remember how wide that cut is but it's a good little tractor we use it a lot for mowing um, obviously we bought this one because I had PTO three-point drawbar we got a little uh, four-foot brush hog for it um, I'll be picking up a uh, little rototiller for it um, I've got some other attachments we can use this thing but what we're working on today is I was mowing with it yesterday and I started smelling antifreeze and uh, <clears throat> came out front and it was leaking what had happened was the battery hold down came loose and beat up the radiator so I need to get the radiator out so that I can send it out and have it fixed or get it replaced or whatever the case is so um, a bunch of Phillips screws hex heads shouldn't be too much I'm gonna drain the antifreeze real quick um, I'm hoping I'll have to look at it a little deeper I don't know if I need to take this front hood assembly off but we'll get it figured out I gotta get it off so I can get it out to the radiator shop see if it uh, if it needs replaced or if they can repair it just one and this is a protective protective screen that goes in here you can take that out and clean it <clears throat> which I do quite often but you know now it's pretty much garbage I'll have to get another one of them so let's get this thing drained start working on getting out all right the hole is right there that's what was leaking this is probably not long for the world and there's a spot here, a spot here that has leaked, and there's a spot. So I'm going to take it in the radiator shop see what they say. So rather than just fix the effects, which would be the leak, we can find the cause of why that thing came loose, why that battery came loose. It looks like the battery tray battery must have leaked at some point and ate away at some of this metal made it thin but it's uh, over time battery sitting in there is let it come down so I think I'm going to get a new piece of steel I have a 90 bent on it and then we'll make us a better battery hold down something a little more positive 